the angel of the Lord announced unto Mary, and she conceived by the Holy Ghost. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Behold the handmaid of the Lord. Be it unto me according to thy word. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. We beseech thee, O Lord, pour thy grace into our hearts, that as we have known the incarnation of thy Son, Jesus Christ, by the message of an angel, so by his cross and passion we may be brought unto the glory of his resurrection, through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let my prayer be set forth in thy sight as the incense, and let the lifting up of my hands be an evening sacrifice. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Portion of the Psalter appointed for this evening. Begins with Psalm 32. Blessed is he whose unrighteousness is forgiven, and whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man unto whom the Lord imputeth no sin, and in whose spirit there is no guile. For whilst I held my tongue, my bones consumed away through my daily complaining. For thy hand was heavy upon me day and night, and my moisture was like the drought in summer. I acknowledged my sin unto thee, and mine unrighteousness have I not hid. I said, I will confess my sins unto the Lord, and so thou forgavest the wickedness of my sin. For this shall every one that is godly make his prayer unto thee in a time when thou mayest be found. Surely the great water flood shall not come nigh him. Thou art a place to hide me in. Thou shalt preserve me from trouble. Thou shalt compass me about with songs of deliverance. I will inform thee and teach thee in the way wherein thou shalt go, and I will guide thee with mine eye. Be ye not like to horse and mule which have no understanding, whose mouths must be held with bit and bridle, else they will not obey thee. Great plagues remain for the ungodly, but whoso putteth his trust in the Lord, mercy embraceth him on every side. Be glad, O ye righteous, and rejoice in the Lord. And be joyful, all ye that are true of heart. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Rejoice in the Lord, O ye righteous, for it becometh well the just to be thankful. Praise the Lord with harp. Sing praises unto him with the lute, an instrument of ten strings. Sing unto the Lord a new song. Sing praises lustily unto him with a good courage. For the word of the Lord is true, and all his works are faithful. He loveth righteousness and judgment. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. By the word of the Lord were the heavens made, and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. He gathereth the waters of the sea together as it were upon an heap, and layeth up the deep as in a treasure house. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Stand in awe of him, all ye that dwell in the world. For he spake, and it was done. He commanded, and it stood fast. The Lord bringeth the counsel of the heathen to naught, and maketh the devices of the people to be of none effect, and casteth out the counsels of princes. The counsel of the Lord shall endure for ever, and the thoughts of his heart from generation to generation. Blessed are the people whose God is the Lord, 
and blessed are the folk that he hath chosen to him to be his inheritance. The Lord looketh down from heaven, and beholdeth all the children of men. From the habitation of his dwelling he considereth all them that dwell on the earth. He fashioneth all the hearts of them, and understandeth all their works. There is no king that can be saved by the multitude of an host. Neither is any mighty man delivered by much strength. A horse is counted but a vain thing to save a man. Neither shall he deliver any man by his great strength. Behold, the eye of the Lord is upon them that fear him, and upon them that put their trust in his mercy, to deliver their soul from death, and to feed them in the time of dearth. Our soul hath patiently tarried for the Lord, for he is our help and our shield. For our heart shall rejoice in him, because we have hoped in his holy name. Let thy merciful kindness, O Lord, be upon us, like as we do put our trust in thee. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. I will always give thanks unto the Lord. His praise shall ever be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. O oh, praise the Lord with me, and let us magnify his name together. I sought the Lord, and he heard me. Yea, he delivered me out of all my fear. They had an eye unto him, and were light, and their faces were not ashamed. Lo, the poor crieth, and the Lord heareth him. Yea, and saveth him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord tarrieth round about them that fear him, and delivereth them. O taste and see how gracious the Lord is. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. O fear the Lord, ye that are his saints, for they that fear him lack nothing. The lions do lack and suffer hunger, but they who seek the Lord shall want no manner of thing that is good. Come, ye children, and hearken unto me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. What man is he that lusteth to live, and would fain see good days? Keep thy tongue from evil, and thy lips that they speak no guile. Eschew evil and do good. Seek peace and ensue it. The eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and his ears are open unto their prayers. The countenance of the Lord is against them that do evil to root out the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry, and the Lord heareth them, and delivereth them out of all their troubles. The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a contrite heart, and will save such as be of an humble spirit. Great are the troubles of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of all. He keepeth all his bones, so that not one of them is broken. But misfortune shall slay the ungodly, and they that hate the righteous shall be desolate. The Lord delivereth the souls of his servants, and all they that put their trust in him shall not be destitute. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Here beginneth the 16th verse of the 43rd chapter of the book of Genesis. When Joseph saw Benjamin with them, he said to the steward of his house, Bring the men into the house and slaughter an animal and make ready, for the men are to dine with me at noon. The man did as Joseph bade him and brought them to Joseph's house. And the men were afraid. Because they were brought to Joseph's house, and they said, It is because of the money which was replaced in our sacks the first time, that we are brought in, so that he may seek occasion against us, and fall upon us to make slaves of us, and seize our asses. So they went up to the steward of Joseph's house, and spoke with him at the door of the house, and said, O oh, my Lord, we came down the first time to buy food, and when we came to the lodging place, we opened our sacks, and there was every man's money in the mouth of his sack, our money in full weight. So we have brought it again with us, and we have brought other money down in our hand to buy food. We do not know who put our money in our sacks. 
He replied, Rest assured, do not be afraid. Your God and the God of your father must have put treasure in your sacks for you. I received your money. Then he brought Simeon out to them. And when the man had brought the men into Joseph's house and given them water, and they had washed their feet, and when he had given their asses provender, they made ready the present for Joseph's coming at noon, for they heard that they should eat bread, bread there. When Joseph came home, they brought into the house to him the present which they had with them, and bowed down to him to the ground. And he inquired about their welfare and said, Is your father well, the old man of whom you spoke? Is he still alive? They said, Your servant, our father, is well. He is still alive. And they bowed their heads and made obeisance. He lifted up his eyes and saw his brother Benjamin, his mother's son, and said, Is this your youngest brother of whom you spoke to me? God be gracious to you, my son. Then Joseph made haste, for his heart yearned for his brother, and he sought a place to weep. And he entered his chamber and wept there. Then he washed his face and came out, and controlling himself, he said, let food be served. They served him by himself, and them by themselves, and the Egyptians who ate with him by themselves, because the Egyptians might not eat bread with the Hebrews, for that is an abomination to the Egyptians. And they sat before him, the firstborn according to his birthright, and the youngest according to his youth. And the men looked at one another in amazement. Portions were taken to them from Joseph's table. But Benjamin's portion was five times as much as any of theirs. So they drank and were merry with him. Here endeth the reading. My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior. For he hath regarded the lowliness of his handmaiden. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. For he that is mighty hath magnified me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on them that fear him throughout all generations. He has showed strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He hath put down the mighty from their seat, and hath exalted the humble and meek. He hath filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he hath sent empty away. He, remembering his mercy, hath opened his servant Israel, as he promised to our forefathers, Abraham and his seed forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Here beginneth the seventh chapter of the Gospel according to St. John. Jesus went about in Galilee. He would not go about in Judea, because the Jews sought to kill him. Now the Jews' feast of tabernacles was at hand. So his brothers said to him, Leave here and go to Judea, that your disciples may see the works you are doing. For no man works in secret if he seeks to be known openly. If you do these things, show yourself to the world. For even his brothers did not believe in him. Jesus said to them, My time has not yet come, but your time is always here. The world cannot hate you, but it hates me, because I testify of it that its works are evil. Go to the feast yourselves. I am not going up to this feast, for my time has not yet fully come. So saying, he remained in Galilee. But after his brothers had gone up to the feast, then he also went up, not publicly, but in private. The Jews were looking for him at the feast and saying, Where is he? And there was much muttering about him among the people. While some said, He is a good man. Others said, No, he is leading the people astray. Yet for fear of the Jews, no one spoke openly of him. Here endeth the reading. Lord, now let us thou thy servant depart in peace, according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people to be a light to lighten the Gentiles, and to be the glory of thy people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. I believe in God, 
the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us, and grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the state, and mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. Endue thy ministers with righteousness, and make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people, and bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, for it is thou, Lord, only that makest us dwell in safety. O God, make clean our hearts within us, and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. Almighty God, who seest that we have no power of ourselves to help ourselves, keep us both outwardly in our bodies and inwardly in our souls, that we may be defended from all adversities which may happen to the body and from all evil thoughts which may assault and hurt the soul. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O God, from whom all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works do proceed, Give unto thy servants that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey thy commandments, and also that by thee we, being defender from the fear of our enemies, may pass our time in rest and quietness to the merits of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Light in our darkness, we beseech thee, O Lord, and by thy great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night for the love of thy only Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. What I have for you this evening is about St. Paulette, virgin. The circumstances of the saint's birth were humble, her father being a carpenter at the Abbey of Corby in Picardy. Her parents were devout people who gave to their little girl the name of Nicolette, in honor of St. Nicholas of Myra. Both her parents died when Colette was 17, leaving her under the care of the abbot of Corby. After a time in a convent, she distributed to the poor the little she had inherited and entered the third order of St. Francis. The abbot gave her a small hermitage beside the church of Corby, where she lived a life of such austerity that her fame spread far and wide, and many sought her prayers and advice. Colette had visions, in one of which the seraphic father St. Francis appeared and charged her to restore the first rule of St. Clair in all its original severity. Not unnaturally, she hesitated, but she received what she recognized as a sign from heaven when she was struck blind for three days and dumb for three days more. Encouraged by Father Henry de Baum, her director, she left her cell in 1406 and straightway made an attempt to explain her mission in one or two convents, but soon discovered that if she was to succeed, she must be invested with the proper authority. Barefoot, dressed in a habit made up of patches, Colette sent out for Nice to seek Peter de Luna, who at that epoch of the great schism was acknowledged by the French as Pope under the name of Benedict the Thirteenth. He received her with great consideration, and not only professed her under the rule of St. Clair, but was so much impressed that he constituted her superioress of all convents of minoresses that she might reform or found with a mission to the friars and tertiaries of St. Francis as well. 
At the same time, he appointed Father Henry de Baum to act as her assistant. Armed with these powers, St. Colette went from convent to convent, traveling through France, Savoy, and Flanders, and at first she met with violent opposition, being treated as a fanatic and even accused of sorcery. But rebuffs, ill will, and calumnies were all alike received with joy, and after a while she began to meet with a more favorable reception, especially in Savoy, where her reform gained both sympathizers and recruits, and from thence it passed to Burgundy, France, Flanders, and Spain. Besançon was the first house of poor Clares to receive her revised rule in 1410. Altogether, she founded 17 new convents, besides reforming numerous old ones, and several houses of Franciscan friars accepted her reform. It was in Flanders, where she had established several houses, that St. Colette was seized with her last illness. She foretold her own death, received the last sacraments, and died in her convent at Ghent in her 67th year. Her body was removed from Ghent by the poor Clares when the Emperor Joseph II was suppressing a number of religious houses in Flanders and born to her convent at Poligny, 32 miles from Besançon. She was canonized in 1807. St. Colette, pray for us. Almighty and everlasting God, who hatest nothing that thou hast made, and dost forgive the sins of all those who are penitent, create and make in us new and contrite hearts, that we, worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, may obtain of thee, the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness, through Jesus Christ our Lord. O most mighty and merciful God, in this time of grievous sickness, we flee unto thee for succor. Deliver us, we beseech thee, from our peril. Give strength and skill to all those who minister to the sick, prosper the means made use of for their cure, and grant that perceiving how frail and uncertain our life is, we may apply our hearts unto that heavenly wisdom which leadeth to eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We give thanks for their life with us in our parish family for Nick and Tiffany and Robert and Margaret. And we remember before God this day Father uh, Bishop James and the Diocese of Sitway in Myanmar. We pray also for Stella, Carol, Doris, Father James, Vicky, Dottie, Martha, Amy, Betty, Father David, Father Robert, Father Stephen, Jacqueline, Father Michael, Margaret Mary, Betty, William, Joan, Susan, Randall, Kitty, Father Ivor, Father Phelps, Melissa, Tom, and Monty. We ask the Lord's protection and care for all women with child and the children they carry, especially Sydney. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayers. We should glory in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, for he is our salvation, our life, and our resurrection. Through him we are saved and made free. Let us pray. Father, your Son showed the depth of his love when for our sake he opened his arms on the cross, and he has commanded us to love one another. Keep the brothers of the Society of the Holy Cross united in love and in faith. Through the saving power of the cross impressed inwardly upon our lives and revealed outwardly in our work, may others come to know your love and your truth. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, then unworthy servants, do give thee most humble and hearty thanks for all thy goodness and loving kindness to us and to all men. We bless thee for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for thine inestimable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we beseech thee, give us that due sense of all thy mercies, that our hearts may be unfeignedly thankful, and that we show forth thy praise not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to thy service, and by walking before thee in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. 
to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen.